freshwater lakes in this area, in the Midwest, you know, are facing all kinds of issues. One of them is land use, agriculture, you know, nutrient runoff, but common carp invasive fish are a big problem too. Basically what happens, you get carp in the system and they're really good at going to the bottom of the lakes and turning it all up. So what you end up with, after a long period of time with lots of carp, is just a very turbid lake, very weedless, lot, maybe a couple small species. But when you start removing them, you see the turbidity coming down. You see the weeds start to come back a little bit. And that, you know, that gives more habitat for the native fish to have better reproductive years. The small fish come back, the predators start to come back, and you know, everything just turns back to its more natural state. Carp Solutions uh, got established in 2015, sort of as a branching off of the research that we were doing at the University of Minnesota. And we do all kinds of things, starting with population assessments, figuring out how many carp there are and why so many, and then figure, figuring out how to control them. What we're doing here is just one example of the new technologies that we develop. So this whole process starts with a natural fish behavior, which is spawning migration. So the fish migrate upstream from Long Lake, and we have this electric guidance system that is positioned all the way across the stream. So as the fish are migrating, they can't cross it they're deflected by it at an angle, and that electric guidance system leads them into a trap. So they can enter the trap, which is really a large fenced-in area. Once they are inside the trap, they tend to aggregate there, and once enough of them aggregate inside the trap, we close the door behind them. So we close the gate up, and then, you know, they're trapped in there. You get a call early in the morning, everyone's all pumped up, there's a bunch of fish. So we turn those electrodes one and then another and another, and by doing so, we aggregate the fish really tightly in the lower end of the trap. And that leads to a narrow channel that leads to a conveyor belt that sits in the water at an angle. So the fish are aggregating tightly and eventually they are over the conveyor and we start getting them out of the stream and that takes them on another conveyor and that takes them on land. And when they are exiting, that second conveyor, they drop into a sorting table and they slide through an antenna that scans them. So if a fish is, is tagged, it scans the tag and records it into you know, the computer. So at the end of the day, we can look at the data. We know how many fish we caught and we know how many of them were tagged. So we know what percentage of the population we caught. You know, the idea is to have technology that is not lethal, that's species specific. You know, you can get the carp out and let the native fish migrate. So even the way we build our trap, the spacing between the bars is such that a lot of the smaller native fish can go right through, so we're not even stopping those. We're only stopping big fish like carp or maybe northern pike. So then when we get them out of the water, we have to sort them out and release the pike and remove the carp basically just pull the fish out and right into the buckets. It's uh, a lot of hands off, which is definitely unique for carp solutions. We're usually, you know, in the water, touching pretty much every fish. And this is just very stand out of the water. Basically don't even need your waders. So very automated. These are new technologies. So it's not like other people are doing it and you can go and buy a system off the shelf and just apply it. No, they don't exist. Like even the conveyor belts. It was a local company who built them for us and they never built a conveyor belt that would grab fish you know, from underwater and carry it on land. So they kind of guessed and engineered it and, and uh, developed two prototypes and they work great. You know, we tested them yesterday and it worked beautifully. So that was exciting. There's a lot of bad vibes around when you talk about common carp. So you know, a lot of people tend to kind of know, you know why are the carp here? What are they doing? And we can actually give them an explanation. You know, this is exactly why they're bad. You know, they're digging up the sediment and, you know, causing all sorts of disruption. Us getting the carp out is actually good for everyone. Generally, the people are pretty positive about it. Everyone's excited. And, you know, seeing the quantity of fish coming out is pretty impressive. So people are pretty excited about it. So for example, we think that if you could remove, say, 10,000 carp from Rice Creek every year when they migrate, in two or three years, you should have that population under control. And then once you have the installation here in place, 
whenever the remaining carp are moving, you could do the removal in the stream with the technology we developed for maybe one, one week every year just to keep them, keep them low. Carp are a problem globally, not just here, you know, in New Brighton, Minnesota, right? If we develop a new technology that works here, it could potentially be used worldwide. And also it could be used to manage other invasive fish, uh, including the silver carp or the big head carp that are coming up the Mississippi, because they migrate too. Really the key is to develop technologies that are essentially hands-free. I think it's gonna be something that we can definitely put forth in a lot of other areas. So for the future use, this is gonna be something that can be very positive.